All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to another episode of Downright Annoyed uh, with Movies. I am one of your hosts today, uh, Michael from the Downright Nerdy Podcast. Thank you guys all for joining us today. We are going to be discussing the movie Cube from 1997. Um, it's very interesting type of movie, but before we get into all that, let me go around the horn and let, uh, you guys introduce yourselves, all of our assistant hosts, and, uh, we'll start with, uh, Jackson. Hey everybody. Uh, thank you, Michael, for the wonderful intro as always. Uh, my name is Jackson. I'm with Bored and Annoyed. Um, you can find us on YouTube, any, uh, any podcast platform. We do a weekly, um, weekly podcast episode on movies. Uh, lately we've been having to come up with more creative topics of discussion, obviously, because uh, Ryan's the only one that seems to be able to get a hand <laughs> on all the new movies. But um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, boredandannoyed.com, go from there, find everything. And uh, excited to talk about Cube. I, uh, it was quite the hit to the memory banks when this was suggested last week. So awesome. Cool. And uh, let's go to Cookie. Hey guys, uh, Cookie from Just Little Podcast. You can find me on all platforms of social media at Just Little Podcast. On Twitter, Just Podcasting. I uh, have a weekly show that's going to be coming back hopefully soon. I just did some show notes, so I'm ready to rock and roll and get some more content out to you guys. And I'm excited for this film because I've never seen it, and this is the first thing for me. So I want to hear you guys' thoughts for sure. Awesome. Great. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Ryan. Hey guys, uh, Kyle from Monster Energy Drink couldn't be here today, so I am filling in for him this week again. Uh, I am Ryan from the Fake Nerd Podcast. We're a weekly pop culture podcast, talks about movies, comics, video games, all that stuff. Uh, you can find us on every podcasting platform, just like all the other fine folks here. Uh, we are going live on YouTube on Sundays now because of the quarantine, and we are reviewing all the big hit movies. We've seen Mulan and reviewed it. We've seen New Mutants and reviewed it. There's another movie that we saw and definitely reviewed it. Forgot what it's called, though, but uh, check us out uh, on our YouTube page on Sundays. Pa -pow. I like hey, you. Rob. Ryan, is that your co-host in the background looking through uh through the cube hole there? <laughs> Jonathan, get out of here. Sorry. Hold on. There we go. Don't All worry right. About cool. Don't worry about it. Last, last but not least, we got uh, Paul. Thanks for joining. Thanks for coming, buddy. Hey, I'm Paul from the podcast Tales from the Flip Side. Uh, check us out Monday nights about 9:30. Uh, we go live, just kind of shoot the breeze and um uh, if that's not your thing, uh, maybe check out our YouTube channel. We got a bunch of other shows on there. Um, got some sports card stuff. We have a show called Three Card Monty. Uh, guys talk about their collection there, Global Comic Safari, and uh, all sorts of stuff. So uh, check out the playlists. Appreciate it. Awesome. Cool. And uh, just as a reminder, everybody, make sure you guys, uh, if you guys are watching this on the Rewind or in the live chat, uh, make sure you guys sub up everybody here. Click that notification bell because we're always going live uh, the, these uh, every week for these uh, movie reviews. Um, just real quick before we head into it, uh, Perry's in the chat. Dude, thanks for stopping by. I don't got too many. There's so much stuff going on right now on uh, YouTube. So uh, just appreciate your time, buddy. So thanks very much. Ken um, from Pinky's Out is not here this week, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah he's, he's probably drinking somewhere. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for his new next show or something. Sounded right, like so he forgot a, a wife's birthday dinner, maybe, or something like that. Oh Not to call him out publicly, but that's pretty shameful. <laughs> <laughs> that was, oh, that's funny. All right, cool. Let's go around the horn. Um, let's start with uh, Paul. Uh, 30 seconds on the clock. Uh, initial, uh, initial impressions from Cube. Uh, so this was the second time I've seen this movie, but it's been a long time. Um, I don't know. It was okay. It didn't, uh, it, I don't know. It didn't hit all the nostalgia feels I thought it would. Uh, I thought it was a good movie and, um, you know, you can kind of look at it in different ways, but I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the characters and uh, the overall question of what's happening outside of the cube as well. So good watch. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, how about uh, you, Ryan? Well, uh, 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 wait, uh. hold on, hold on. There it is. Go. Cool. I think Cube is a really cool movie. Um, it is. Uh, I, after researching a lot more, this is a very, very low budget movie. Um, and it's just like a passion project of this one guy to make this weird movie that originally was going to start as like, uh, like this, these people trapped in hell. Um, and then it progressively turned into just kind of like a more like science experiment because of the budget. But um, I think the performances are pretty good. And I, I really like how it uh, changes all the characters. And like, you think a person is one way, but they're really this way uh, throughout the whole movie. Uh, it changes like, boop. <laughs> all right, uh, Cookie, go for it. It's uh, it's an interesting film. So definitely mind twist on you, kind of figuring out what's going on with 
uh, the people inside this cube, how is it all operating, how is everything flowing, and then of course there's a subliminal message behind it for each character and how they uh, portray society as a whole with the government, with technology, the whole nine yards. So it's definitely very interesting. It's it's an interesting film for me. It's it's not great. It's not good. It's just interesting. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, thank you, uh, Jackson. You know, I uh, you you didn't start the clock. I should have just no, I did. Oh. Yeah. Um, no, I um, I used to really like this movie. Uh, I still kind of like it, but I think that this is one of those where over the last uh, you know, twenty years or so that have gone by since it came out, and I originally saw it. There's been so much like escape room type movie, so many of the these types of movies that this one has fallen a little bit. And I would say I thought the performances were horrible. Oh, um, it like ruined the movie uh, to a certain extent. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to go 30 seconds on the clock. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I liked the movie a lot. Uh, if it weren't for the terrible acting, I probably would have given it a much higher grade. Um, overall, I love the premise. I love the, uh, um, I love the idea of cube. Um, yeah. I don't need the 30 seconds. Yeah, that was it. So, I will say the first thing, uh, the script is not the strongest aspect of this movie at all. I will definitely admit that. Um, all right, cool. We'll tell you what. Let's start oh, yeah. with you, man. Yeah. What do you got? Oh, yeah. Um, really, I just think I think the premise alone uh, uh, carried me through a lot of it. And I do think some of the performances are a little wacky, a little out there. But, um, like, if I was trapped in a cube for who knows how long, almost like a quarantine, I think I might go a little <laughs> mad. Ah, I'm crazy. I shaved my beard. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> For now, <laughs> I do think the, the script's kind of bad, um, but I do think half the performances work for me. Um, I like Quentin, I think he his ridiculous nonsense. Like, uh, the thing I like about the movie is like, you think Quentin is the hero, you think he's the hero, but he's actually the villain. You think people that are like are the bad guys become the good guys. That's what I like about the movie. Um, uh, Quentin is nuts, yeah, but I'd rather him be nuts than be boring. Do you guys know who J. Cole is, the, the rapper? Right. Yeah, is that his dad? That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, is this J. Cole's dad? Because they look identical. Uh, I don't think it is, but uh, but I'll but I'll look it up. I like J. Cole. I uh, <laughs> I actually, for a second at the beginning, I thought he was uh, the guy from Dexter. What's his name? Uh, the oh god, the guy who's always like on to Dexter. Who oh, gets Angel. Like, the actor, yeah, uh, Angel, the detective oh, yeah. Angel. I forget his yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. No, not Angel. Name. Oh, not, not Angel. Angel. The, oh. the black dude. Uh, oh it's god, been, it's been a while. Funny. Yeah, but anyway, he he uh, he was always on to Dexter, and I thought it was uh, Dokes. Dokes was the character's name. It's been a long time. I'm sorry. Hey, but, Ryan, um, actually, uh, real quick, I forgot to do this. Uh, do uh, can you just give a brief synopsis as to like what the movie's about yeah. for everybody watching? So, uh, so a bunch of people just wake up in this cube, uh, not knowing how they get there, how they got there, not knowing if they're connected at all, why they're there. It's a complete mystery. Um, and you slowly get more and more bits throughout the movie of like maybe why they were chosen or why specific people were chosen. But I do like the ambiguity of like, you don't really know. You never really know why they're there. Um, and like as someone who enjoys like David Lynch and like really out there stuff, like I don't always need the answers. Um, I really like, yeah, I like the ambiguity of, of the entire situation and it just drives everyone a little bit more crazy and it makes people uh, become the best versions or the worst versions of themselves. Got it. Um, all right, uh, Paul, what do you got? Uh, I don't know. It was an overall to spoil the movie. I, it was, I don't know. It kind of just was like, uh, stuff you learn as a, a kid, you know, play nice with others and don't, don't move if you're lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to take like a really basic, basic, uh, look on it. But, um, I don't know. I think my favorite character was that, the uh, the, um, the, uh, previous prisoner, the skate artist guy. Ren. Oh, uh, Ren. Ren. Yeah. 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 He he last, uh, yeah. He didn't last very long, but I, from what I, before I watched it, when I, when I was going to rewatch it, I was like, yeah, I remember him, the guy who uh, wants everybody to, <laughs> to use their buttons to, uh, to chew on their buttons. On the to keep this is the live live going. So let me ask you all this. Was this your first time seeing it? I know cookie. You said it was yeah. What about you three. I've seen it once before, like 10 years ago. Yeah. Once before too. So I, I think that's why maybe, cause it's maybe a good, a one-off movie like it's not one that you would want to yeah. put in every weekend <laughs> yeah i remember this being like the one of those movies a long time ago that like you oh you gotta see this mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. interesting you know what i mean so 
Uh, I feel like today there's a, like I said, there's been some of these. So, um, you know, I, I do like, I do like some aspects of it quite a bit. I love how they stretch the budget by just basically having the same room with different lighting behind the walls they and every five, they use five rooms. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, uh, and I also really like as they start to figure stuff out, I actually like there's a, the character I like best is the one who designed the shell of the cube. I yeah. think. Yeah. Crazy. Some Oops, like sorry. interesting stuff here, but, um, but yeah, I, uh, I just, it didn't, it didn't strike me the way it used to. I think the deaths are pretty cool though, too, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. You know, the whole time I was watching this, uh, uh, I had the same thoughts that you did Jackson in the sense that, uh, you know, there's a lot of escape rooms nowadays. This is my first time ever watching it. I, I didn't know any, any, I didn't know, even know this was a thing before, but, uh, I would assume that when it came out is one of like the first of its kind being kind of like an escape room type of movie. And I, I absolutely love the premise. Like the whole time I was watching it and this could partially be in, this could partially be because I couldn't stand the acting. This would be a great movie to remake. Um, and maybe have a little bit more backstory about, you know, maybe the overall engineers of the cube. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the cube is, Maybe that's part of the mystery of why this movie works, though. I don't know. I mean, they made two. They made two sequels, and one's yeah. a prequel, and they're both oh bad. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. I mean, me, I absolutely, I like love like lore and stuff like that. So I, I love seeing like uh, like how shit how shit comes to be. Maybe I don't know if that's the right wording. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, actually, to be honest, I, I actually. I, I, despite the terrible acting, I enjoyed this movie. I was having a good time watching it. I think the, I think it has not, a really good pace. I love the fact that the, it's not about how they got there or, you know, like there's no answer that you get. As yeah. Far so, as that's concerned. I like that. Are, yeah. Some questions are best left unanswered. Right. So, yeah, I mean, like, so when I say that I would like the lore, it's like either you give us lore, like right at the get go, or don't give us any at all. Right. Um, that's the only way that that movie, that the movie could really work. Um, for yeah. me, uh, I think the, the bit of lore that we did get with worth talking about, I was hired to do the, the exterior cube part. I don't know anything about anything else. And basically he says like, this was a big experiment and nobody can say that it was wrong. So we have to use it or else it would have been all for nothing. And that for me is like, it could be an experiment. It could be the government. It could be whatever. I got enough for me to be like, People made a mistake, but they can't say they made a mistake, so they have to kill people in it. And that's, that's something would, that I could believe that in a real sad way. I'm not gonna lie, I was really hoping for aliens until I saw the numbers, and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> well, hey, aliens use math too, right? Yeah, but not like our numbers. Like, yeah, I don't know uh, where where he goes at the end of the movie. We don't know. Right. Well, the other thing that's kind of neat too is that you do have the characters like you're you're getting a little bit of a a look into the way they think, right? Because one of them's like, oh, it's a big corporation. One of them thinks it's the government. So it's like. Um, you do have characters with very opposing viewpoints and they, it comes out through the arguments that they get into within the cube. I and like how they all had different personalities and different, uh, viewpoints. They all had a specific purpose within the cube, right? Right. Yeah. Except for, I can't figure out what the cop dudes, the purpose was. The, I think his own, per his, the whole purpose of him, him was to create chaos. I suppose. I yeah, that could yeah. be, that could be true. And I it's love like a, the, I love the opening. Oh, go ahead. Uh, who was going to talk? Uh, I was just going to say it's like a really bad group project. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Let me yeah, ask they, you this for for actually maybe Cookie because you guys have already seen it or maybe you remember from the first time you ever saw it at the very end when he goes through the light. Did any of you expect to see like an even larger puzzle that he would have had to like gotten to? Like you know, like in Maze Runner when yeah. you get when you got out of the maze, you just got into like another big like world that he has to escape again. Like the cube was just step one, and then you know step two. Did anyone else think that? I was totally thinking. I thought that. that for a second. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I cut Ryan off before though. Do you remember what you're gonna say, Ryan? Um. <laughs> get back to me. Let me go through my mind chamber. <laughs> uh, when you guys I, first. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was gonna say when you guys first watched this. Um, what was your reaction to it? Was it like something that you were afraid of or intimidated by with what was going on? How did your mind kind of perceive everything to be taking place? I, I thought it was like mind blowingly cool when the first time I saw it, I remember. Like, I remember I was like blown away. Like, oh, everybody's got to see this. Now, did I think it was like the greatest movie ever? No, but but I did think it was cool. Now, 
Um, how did my mind react to the actual cube stuff? Like, I, I don't know. It's one of those movies. Like it doesn't, it, do, it, it doesn't give you much information, but I also feel like it doesn't like make you sit there and go crazy trying to figure it out either, which I think is the strength to the movie. It's a solid you know? 90 minutes. It's tight. I think, right. I think, I, I think I the pacing that. is really good. Like it amps up at the correct, mm -hmm. like if this was like two hours long, there might be some like, like nonsense with people yelling for no reason. But I think everything, even if the acting or scripts are bad, I think it is so uh, tightly knit where I'm never like, I need to know more. I need to know less or something. I think it was a perfect uh, length for the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't need to have like I feel like the last couple of movies we've watched, they were they could have cut out a little bit, right? Yeah. Finally, we get a movie where it's like, okay, this was actually a really good length. It had it didn't. I, I really don't feel like that there were any scenes that were like unneeded. Maybe although you know what kind of was a little weird. You know those like mushroom like inducing kind of scenes where it's like whoa, like the yeah, yeah. Like, we're in, like a world like. I, I could have maybe done without that. Yeah. Yes, well, I, I think they're they're trying to bring a little bit of visual flair to yeah. the movie because it's just the same thing over and over again. <laughs> yeah. You know? I gotta I gotta say the budget for this movie was three hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It's pretty I, impressive. In nineteen ninety seven, I still can't believe that this looks like I, I don't make movies, but like you guys know how much like Avengers movie costs and how much like small movies cost. Like mm -hmm. Adam Sandler movies cost fifty million dollars. Right. But, the fact that they made this movie and it's it's the passion behind it. That's like uh, uh, what like necessity is the is the strength of creativity. It's there's some phrase where like the lower budget, the more hard you have to work to make it look good. And if this movie had a higher budget, I don't think it would look as good because they really had to try. Brevity is the soul of wit. Is one <laughs> that is one of them. True. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I uh, did. Has anybody here watched on Netflix? It just came out. Um. Uh. The platform. Has anyone watched that yet? No. You no. Okay, so the platform is so much like this that, and I watch them one day after the <laughs> other. And like, I think watching the platform on Saturday and then watching this on Sunday or whatever really hurt this movie. Uh, yeah. I highly, if everybody likes Cube, go watch the platform on Netflix. It's awesome. Um, oh, all right. But yeah, is it that would be a room type of movie as well. well yeah, so in the platform, essentially a guy wakes up, he's in a prison, and there's two people on each level, uh, and there's like hundreds of levels in this prison, right, with a big hole in the middle, and the premise is that someone prepares this huge, beautiful meal every day, and it starts at the top level and makes its way down, it's timed on each level, and as you get farther down, you're left with like the scraps, right? So, and every month, it's like you're on a new floor. So basically, they don't go much into, you know, how this place got here, what's the what's the deal with the meal, all that stuff. But you're stuck in this, you know, this area. And again, they probably only had only had to build a few floors because, you know, all you have to do is switch a character or whatever. And uh, I would imagine it was extremely cheap as well. But yeah, that's just a recommendation for any Cube fan. Is it a movie or a series? It's a movie. Oh, okay, cool. And it's um, awesome. It's brutal, but it's awesome. Did Looking anyone else, uh, when going back to Cube real quick, did anybody else uh, kind of feel like this was just saw with mixed with the Rubik's Cube? Like every, like all the. I mean, yes, but this memory. came up before them, so it's yeah, not it, fair. It did. I understand that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm like, it, it really had that saw feeling to it because every every different room was a different like horror. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, um, that's the problem when you watch an old movie first. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. the John, it's the John Carter situation. People mm -hmm. saw John Carter like, wow, this is ripping off Star Wars. I'm like, no, nah, dude, Star Wars was influenced by John Carter. That's not how it works. But like, I understand it's hard to separate seeing a 2019 escape room from seeing a 1997 escape room. Mm -hmm. um, like if I saw this in 1997 when it came out, I'm sure my mind would have been blown, man. Cause like this was before the matrix. This was before like people were doing like weird stuff like that yeah. with science fiction and, and budgets, even though it's, it didn't have a budget. It's very much like Hitchcock influenced. I would say like, yeah, it's, it's actually not... inspired from a twilight zone episode where people yeah. are trapped in a room together. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah, that, that is true though, Michael. I mean, that's the problem. And I love the fact that you bring up John Carter, Ryan, because I'm one of those, like, I love John Carter. I think it's like amazing. All I the fake nerds movie. like that movie. Oh yeah. yeah. I love that movie. And it's like, yeah, it does get shit on. And you're right. People see it. And it's, you know, that one's a little different because it actually came out as a film after all those other ones. Right. But yeah. But yeah, this movie is uh, 
I mean, it's fine. I, I would suggest it to anyone who likes kind of weird shit, you know? Yeah. So it's a nice, like you said, it's a nice one and done. Like, I think if you like science fiction movies, you owe it to yourself to see like, oh, what was this low budget Canadian independent science fiction movie that came out? Like, I think it's pretty impressive for what it was trying to be. Who's uh, who's going to suggest uh, Cube 2 Hypercube for next week? I, oh, I, I, mean, I was, uh, Ken's gone. So. I'm busy next week, <laughs> I was, so uh, I, gonna, I can't Cube it. I was, was going to say, those two movies explore a little more of the outside the Cube lore. Should we just spoil it? Or... It's I don't I don't first of all I don't remember it because I saw Cube two once and I refused right. to watch it again. Oh, go ahead, you spoil it because I don't think we're ever gonna, ever going to watch it. The only <laughs> thing I remember, uh, and and the, the only thing I think I remember is that it's basically um, it kind of like Saw in the sense of that uh, people are people are controlling the cube. Like I, I remember a scene where they're in front of all these screens watching the characters, and I think there are I think there are like people who pay to watch them survive or not survive. Uh, the cube, and I think that's basically the outside premise of it. That's far um, less interesting than what I would have thought. Yeah, I, I could be wrong, and that's my vague, vague memory. Yeah, way um, less interesting than what we just watched. Yeah. I got a little uh, fun fact: all the okay. characters are named after real-world prisons. So, like Quentin is after San Quentin, David Worth is uh, Leavenworth Prison, Doctor Holloway is Holloway Women's Prison. So they're all named after real prisons, and I think that's a, a cute little touch. That is neat. I didn't yeah. realize that. And I know that uh, in the uh, group chat that we're all a part of, you got, uh, someone was uh, saying like th they think that this was that the woman was playing Jedzia Dax. It actually wasn't. It was actually Ezri Dax, uh, Nicole DeBoer. Um, she, Different she's Star Trek character Dax in uh, Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't. I don't know. Have we already talked about everything there is to talk? It's, it's about? a it's a very simple movie. Like honestly, there's yeah, not a is. lot to it. Um, um, it they are working simple. on they're working on a remake right now. Oh, oh, good. are they really? Yeah, uh, it's been in production hell for a long time, so it will come oh, out. Okay. Who knows? I yeah. would say you can't talk about this without talking about the whole Rain Man aspect of it with the uh, the autistic character. Oh yeah, Kazan. Yeah, yeah. I like that aspect. It, yeah, that's an interesting touch there. I like it a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although I like nowadays, I kind of feel like that's almost not overdone, but we've seen it so much. But for being in 1997, I was still able to appreciate that. If yeah. that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Like for yeah, for ninety seven, it's like it's rather progressive to have him not just be like a joke character or be made yeah. fun of or something. He's yeah, integral to the plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that spoke to that every character had a purpose. Um, you know, whether they lived long enough to serve it or not. Yeah. Um, you know, who knows what how it could have gone if they would have actually just cooperated. Um, That's one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, scenes of the movie. It's when when. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Levin is yelling at Quinn, like, it's astronomically impossible to do these calculations. And then Kazan's just on the floor, like, no, nah, it's two, dog. Yeah. I'm like, there he is. That's not in here. He's a genius. Yeah. Uh, I thought that, that little scene and them going through the different stuff and Quentin going mad and his head getting like kicked in. Yeah. Floor, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I like this. I hope Quentin doesn't come back. Oopsie poopsie. He does. <laughs> um, who was your guys' favorite deaths? I guess we're, we're still there. Oh, Melty Face. Melty Face. <laughs> That's a good. Like the, that's a good effect. I like the opening death. I would yeah. say the opening was really, really good. That yeah. reminded me of Resident Evil. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. That's a good pull. That's a good, that good practical effect for yeah, a low budget good, man. Very good. And the rub. fact that there's only ten actors inside this entire film, and you you get that sense of like there's so much more than just ten. Like you feel like there's a lot going on. Yeah, that opening scene is is in almost integral to realize like, oh, it's not just like one person or five people. There could be literally a thousands of people in here. We do not know. Yeah. Um, I don't think that uh, uh, what was his name? The um, Quentin could have survived that fall with the blood they showed. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's right, Paul. You're right. You know, that's so this is so unrealistic. Yeah, that uh, part you know what? <laughs> that part <laughs> really coming back, I was like, uh, come on. <laughs> he did get like cut in half and smeared against the wall at the end. So I mean, I guess that kind of makes up for it, right? Oh, Paul, you should know better. All the stuff Jason Voorhees has already gone through in our Friday the thirteenth <laughs> retrospective. Which, yeah. In which one? <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> what mind what, you what? Jason only runs like once out of any film. Hey, that he, man, doesn't have to. he doesn't what, need to. What movie are you guys on? He catches up. 
So, Cookie, do you see how big that dude is? He's like six four, two, know, like 300 right? pounds. He does not do cardio, player. Come on. <laughs> so, I, I watched four the other day. So, I'm through four. Paul had a little bit of a snafu today where he started and almost finished the wrong one. He skipped ahead. So, so we're having, you know, much to be expected, uh, you know, when, when two brilliant minds get together. Well, Paul's problem, man. I, 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 problem, <laughs> where it is. The way they were uploaded, they were out of order. And I just, I just, played the next one and then i didn't catch on until it's literally halfway through and i was like wait a minute yeah so i need to study my roman numerals i think so we will be recording the reviews of three and four shortly uh they're going to air every friday at 1300 eastern time whoa military like that. yeah <laughs> well right. cool. yeah so so yeah so keep an eye out for that on on my channel but not to hog uh Hog the show with that stupidity. I love part eight where he goes to Manhattan and he beats up people ah, with a boombox. Ah, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, um, so I mean, do we have, does anybody else have any final thoughts about Q before we get into our grades? Yes. Do you guys think you guys could have lived if you guys <laughs> yeah. were in that cube? No, I'm dead as hell. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead too. I, I would be able to live. If I stayed in the one cube I started in, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's all I would do. Which they actually should have done if you watch it. If like, yeah. you like, oh right. man, if we sort of stayed here, we would have been fine, probably. Yeah, you know what's it's funny? Imagine us, irony. this this show <laughs> with Ken, of course, and uh, Derek can join too. If if this show were the characters in the movie, um, you know who who gets angry, who who. Who starts oh, crying? I'm, getting, I'm, getting I'm worse. Sure. I'm sitting in a corner like this is stupid. This is all worthless. Just I don't deserve to be alive. Whatever. This is dumb. I'm I would right. just get so mad and just jump into the uh, into the into some some cube that I knew would be just death. Just most, it all quickly. most of the deaths were pretty quick, right? Like the only one who really. <laughs> the, the one I was thinking of who suffered the most would have been Acid Face, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I would the rather be the guy room. who just gets oh. split into a bunch of pieces. Personally, I love that room where they had to be super quiet. That was probably the most intense scene oh, yes. I think of yes. the movie. I mean, I didn't notice it until afterwards, but I was like, "Oh damn, my palms are sweaty." Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, then at the end, because the, end the, mo like, the yeah. movie does deserve some credit for kind of continuing to throw new things at you as it goes along. I, I suppose, you know, like there's new wrinkles that get introduced. There's like the gap between the cubes and the actual mm -hmm. shell of the cube. Um, the math stuff was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. uh, they basically have a human calculator with them in the form of the uh, the uh, the autistic guy. So I uh, yeah, I mean, there's some neat stuff in here. It's worth watching mm -hmm. for sure. Just the yeah. acting. I wish, you know, and it's small budget. So I hate to be that guy who like insults performances, but. Holy crap! Is it ham-fisted? Yeah. <laughs> really? It's they perfect, just perfect, perfect uh, description. Yeah, yeah. I I just really appreciate it because uh, like I was bringing up like I wanted to be a filmmaker for a really long time. So like making a, this was like an independent movie, and like it doesn't look like it to me. Like this could have been made by any studio, and I wouldn't and I wouldn't believe it, or I wouldn't know any difference. Um. So like when I see like the type of creativity that goes into making a sci-fi movie, where you have to make shit that doesn't exist. And you have to do it on the lowest possible budget possible. I that 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 pushes it forward for me a little bit because like it's people are really trying. They're not trying to make a paycheck. They're trying to make a movie. Uh, so like I I give it a lot of credit uh, for just being what it is in, in itself. What would you guys change for the remake? The actors. Uh, <laughs> just just the actors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, keep it ambiguous. Yeah. yeah. You don't need a huge budget, just enough to make the cubes like scary and interesting. Even, actors, even if, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Michael. No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say the actors, maybe some of the actual dialogue and like the character moments between characters. I mean, it's not like you know, I, I'm assuming you know Lawrence Kasdan didn't write this thing. It was just you know, so it could use a little bit more, um, you know, character driven drama in it that isn't so cheesy. I would say. Yeah. They have a good formula. I mean, it's good. The only thing that just didn't uh, knock it out the park at all was the acting. And yeah, like you said, the uh, dialogue. So right. um, they, one of the guys who don't need uh, to change much. Who writes for Orphan Black actually wrote this movie. Oh, there you go. 
All right. Also, the guy who, who directed this went on to the direct uh, Westworld episodes and like Game of Thrones episodes and uh, Lock and Key episodes. So like he's, hey, right. he's come up. Yeah. How, how do you how do you get to the top? You got to start from the bottom. Exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Oh. Ten minutes of screen time on Game of Thrones probably cost twice as much as this movie. <laughs> oh my god! One yeah. dragon shot cost yeah. more than this whole movie. <laughs> I think the only thing I would have changed is uh, no one said where they, where they were from. Like if they were all from the same state, I don't know. I just think that would have added nothing but something at the same time. It would have been interesting to see some people who didn't speak or like everyone maybe spoke a different language or something. Oh, that would be actually yeah. that'd be interesting. Yeah. You know, um, like make make Ren an actual like Frenchman and he speaks French and he's like, just just follow me. And then he dies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then you're like, crap. It'd be kind of interesting. Or, or like, you know how um What's her face had had her glasses right? It was a there was a purpose. Put mm -hmm. other things in there that would have a purpose. Like I don't know, you throw a dog in there because you you need to have a dog, and then you'd have to like manipulate the dog getting mm. in from one room to another. It was, I don't know, just weird things like that could be kind of fun to to do. Um, yeah, an emotional support animal. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And then have just, uh, just one cube hole that only a dog can fit through. I'm <laughs> shocked have... those glasses didn't break. By the way, I was totally even rewatching it. I expected that to be like a thing, a thing that happened. Yeah. No, the yeah. glasses have plot armor. They're the camera. Right. Well, yeah. it would have been it would have been interesting. I when mean, did what they, they break? Because she had that piece. Remember, she stepped on the piece. Of yeah, it, it 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 kind of broke, but it's not broken like to the point that she can't use them. Right. Well, at the yeah. very beginning, they fell and cracked a lot, yeah. but like yeah. she can still use them. Yeah. Were you guys yeah. happy to see that Kazan kind of was the only survivor? Or would you want someone else to have survived? I was yeah. hoping she would. You were hoping she would, the girl? Yeah. yeah. Same here. I, it's my bias with Nicole DeBoer. I, I love her from DS9, and I just <laughs> – I, I, everything about her I love. So Is yeah. this is this pre-DS9, or is it like the same time? It's, this is around the same time because mm -hmm. uh, DS9 started – no, no, this is pre-DS9 because DS9 ended in uh, early 2000s, so uh, – this is 97. This would have been like three seasons into uh, three or four seasons into DS9. So she hadn't even made her appearance yet on screen. Right on. Yeah. I wish um, that someone would have gotten out that would have had the capacity to to try to and tell what happened. Tell what happened. But then at the same time, who would believe him? They probably That's, ended up in another. It's so much more tragic that he's the only one who does make it out because, like, they're not going to believe this dude, even if he can, like, even well, if he, he can actually even... say what happened. Yeah. He can't communicate that. It could just be, yeah. this could just look like a regular building to everyone else. Like, we have no, that's why, again, I like the ambiguity of like, we have no idea about anything about the cube you, at all. You know what I was thinking too would have been a great last scene would be, um, would be him, uh, the autistic uh, kid in like a, like a therapy's office and just, the ther the uh, therapist saying like, "Hey, can you tell me what happened? Can you tell me what happened?" And he just says, "He just keeps saying like, I need twenty seven gum uh, bags of gumdrops or whatever, you know." And he just like yeah. that bad face on it, uh, fad, sad look on his face because he can't say it. But he he's like, what he can say is like twenty seven bags or whatever, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or yeah. if they had a uh, that would have broken my heart right there. They had a solved Rubik's cube, but it was the red side facing out, and he lost it. Oh, that Ooh. Was good now, good. now we're good script writers. I like that. <laughs> um, okay, let's go around the horn. Uh, final thoughts and final grade. Uh, let's start with Paul. Uh, I thought it was good. You know, it seems like any movie that we hate gets a little better after we talk about it and can um, <laughs> let our steam off. But uh, I, you know, it's it's the second time I saw it, so it, it, I know that if this is your uh, well, we spoil it, but if you haven't seen it before, it's your first time watching it, I think you can get a lot out of it. Even in this era of multiple escape movies, um, I thought it was good and looking at characters and all that good stuff. But um, Final Grade, um, I don't know, for now, I'd, at the time, I'd probably give it a maybe a maybe an A, because I think it was kind of one of those everyone's got to see it, groundbreaking movies over the over time. Now, maybe a B minus. Okay. C plus, somewhere on there. Cool. Fair enough. Ryan? I would give it a, I think this is like the epitome of like a solid B movie. Um, I think, yeah, if, it, if you saw it in 1997, like in the theater, I think you'd like your mind to be a little bit more blown, but now, you know, we have time to sit on it and cool on it. I do think it is a, a really well-made independent movie. And I keep saying independent because it was not made by a studio. It's made by a dude who got a bunch of money together and he's like, Hey, help me make this sci-fi movie. And now uh, everyone's better for it. I think um, I would give it, yeah, a solid B. If you like sci-fi movies, if you like escape movies, if you like seeing how, how low budgets can be used in great ways. I should think you should watch Cube. 
Cool. Cookie? Uh, give probably about a C. Uh, I agree a lot with Ryan, what he said in regards to the fact that it is very independent. Um, the acting for me was just not there, and it needed a little bit stronger support in the acting, but overall with 10 or less characters and the budget of what it had, I thought it did a solid job, so I definitely give it probably a solid C. Cool. Jackson? Uh, I'm going to give it a C plus, uh, but I would say that the Quentin cut version that doesn't have that character would have a B plus. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Sounds good. Because he's driving uh, me crazy. <laughs> I'm going to give it a um, a B plus uh, if it did not have uh, Quentin, actually, or a couple, even the uh, couple other characters too. I can't, I can't remember their names offhand, but if they weren't in it or they had different actors in it or different dialogue, it probably would have been a solid a minus movie for me. Uh, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for the, uh, uh, recommendation, Ryan. It was good. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, cool. Are we ready for the uh, wheel? Yeah. So we actually have two wheels because oh, we cool. have to pick another genre. Um, That's right. So, yeah. So let me, uh, I'm going to grab a random wheel here. I don't know which tab I'm opening. So we'll, uh, we'll give this one a shot first here. Uh, it it's going to be the, the weekly wheel. Uh, is everybody seeing it? Yeah. 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 All right, cool. So this is, the, uh, this will just be who determines what we watch next week. Yes. Yeah. So let's give her a spin. Ah, uh, yeah. And, uh, and hope, hopefully our, first right now. we got three people watching. Yeah. So hopefully our small audience is watching. Yeah. Um. And let's. Stop oh yeah. That Wh whoever's is in the uh, chat right now. Uh. Why don't you first? First. Oh, Andy. I think Andy's in the chat. Andy, you got to pick a movie for us, buddy. It's your time, Andy. It's your time to shine. I do not like this. I don't like that he's <laughs> picking our movie. Hollywood. <laughs> if, if he's if he's actually listening, someone just dropped out, so we might not have an audience. No, no, no. Andy's in. He, he just said, "Oh boy." <laughs> so, okay. Come on, buddy. Oh Somebody boy, is right. I don't know if that is. Oh boy, a movie? I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. What if that's what we did? Now, now, I don't think I need to make the starting line since our audience is yeah, so just, Andy, just pick the first movie you could think of. He's, he's like sweating right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Wall, like, like, oh, my God. I was not prepared for this. Oh, yeah. One sec. Look. See? One sec. All <gasps> no, right. We got no. one. Back oh. me. Yes. This <laughs> is going to be a great episode if we get it. <laughs> All right. Uh, hopefully, let's make sure that we can actually stream this. We yeah, got to make sure this is available. Yeah, from, uh, from 1988. All a right. classic. Has anyone seen Mac and Me? Nope. nope. I've just seen the clips that go on uh, on uh, every time Paul Rudd. <laughs> yes. On yeah. That's this great. one's so, yeah, so it, horrible. It oh, is. Man. It's available via uh, Tubi. Tubi. It's. Available. Oh, my favorite uh, uh, entertainment app. Yeah, okay. right. So, so we'll watch it with ads. But yes, it looks like we can watch it. Otherwise, Wait, I'm assuming. Is it on Quibi it. though? I, you know, no, I don't know. only like 10, 10 minute uh, shows. Watching now, the, the second <laughs> yeah. wheel that we have is to pick our second genre for the. Oh, okay. oh, wait, wait a second. Let me close out of this one. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Technical difficulties here. Oh, man, Jesus. That's here the go. first image. That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, so, so now we have, and I just threw a bunch on here. Um, you know, hopefully everybody's happy with these. Ooh, uh, prison. But, Ooh. Yeah, but so let's uh let's roll this, and then this one in sci-fi will be the two that we're spinning between so far for the final episode. Right. Um, so we have Ooh. thriller. Oh, cool. Okay. So I, I would consider a thriller any, you know, like, uh, you know, the what Silence of the Lambs, that series of movies or, you know, uh, horror and thriller. I guess we could give some leeway. But they go really? hand in hand kind of a little bit. Really? That's what you consider thriller, huh? I, I would, would I would almost consider a movie like uh, like a spy thriller. I mean, I know you had spy there, but like those are kind of thrillers, too, wouldn't no. So just looking up what Google says. Which, okay. Yeah. You know, Ooh, Google it's very right broad. Up. It's very broad. It is very broad. So you got <laughs> oh, stuff damn. like glass and I, us is on there, but I wouldn't consider that a thriller. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, okay. we'll figure out some thrillers. Now um, there isn't much of an audience as far as uh, picking thrillers to throw on here. So um, 
you know, I, I guess let's uh, let's wait till next week and we'll ask for some thrillers, maybe. Okay. Unless, somebody wants, uh, unless you want to throw some thrillers out, Andy, and whoever else is in the chat, um, we can we can go ahead and add that. Yeah. Um, before we end this, I thought we'd uh, kind of do some. I, I want to ask you guys something a little uh, different that we haven't done yet. Um, this isn't something that we all have to watch uh, for next episode or anything like that, but. How about if you guys give uh, give everybody a, a recommendation of something to watch right now, since we're all kind of quarantined and uh, got a bunch of time? Um, something you've watched recently that uh, you think that we should all all uh, check out? I love it. Is it all right? A cool. Movie or is it like a, a series? Does it matter? Yeah, here, whatever. I don't just pick something, or it could even be a comic book. I don't care. Whatever. Paul, give me something. Man, I knew it was going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing in the background. Yeah. I recommend that, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to um, – maybe, you know what, I'll give, uh, I'll give you guys a break, and I'll, I, uh, I'll pick the movie that uh, – a movie I was going to suggest for the show. Um, but uh, it's, just, it's just too crazy. I, I, I think it, uh, it's called uh, Beyond – hold on, let me verify the name. Put me on the spot. Oh, from Beyond? No. From uh, I just watched From Beyond. The oh other my god! Day. Stuart awesome. Gordon. Stuart Gordon recently passed away. It's, I know. It's called uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow. I know that movie. It's just I, I don't even know. It's just insane. It's like Mandy, just crazy. I don't oh know. My god. Paul, Sounds like Mandy. You keep yeah. that one because I'll I'll wait to watch that until you win. If you want to discuss it on the show, I'm waiting for somebody to throw something really out there out for us yeah. to review. That, oh my god, is Mandy? If you, if you want something out there? I guarantee you, this guy will have something out there for you. Come on. It's, oh my god. Yeah, you said Mandy. If you guys haven't seen Mandy, that is a Nicolas Cage movie. That is um, what it's. How is it described? It's a revenge movie. It, but it's also like a Studio Ghibli movie. It's like a fantastical murder spree about revenge, but it's like super psychedelic. And it's like, you want some weird, good Nick Cage? Mandy's the best Nick Cage movie in the last like five years. Uh, right. After you said that, Paul, I was like, yes, Mandy. I love Mandy. <laughs> that cool. is some shit. Also, I for my recommendation, I would recommend Castlevania on Netflix. That's one of the, that is the best video game adaptation of all time. And it's a- Don't, don't, tell, my don't, don't tell Jackson's co-host about that. So good, bro. I'm with you, Ryan. <laughs> Wait, why am I not supposed to, why am I Oh, he, about it. he he it's so funny he uh he know michael said he was bummed oh. that he didn't like it michael. i know because i and, love uh, Pennsylvania. and so uh good. although the, the third season was a little uh, wasn't as good as the first two but i still enjoyed it but man jackson's co-host holmes man he, hates he, it. he ripped it what's to the, what's to hate i don't get yeah, it you gotta watch the episode you gotta watch it <laughs> i got yeah, it he i watched it, it. He hates it. But yeah, well, I recommend uh, it twice then. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, you got to make up for this. Cookie, give uh, me something. Jane Silent Bob reboot is free on Amazon Prime. <gasps> and since we were talking as far as um, uh, creators of content kind of do it on their own, of course, this guy did it on his own. Kevin Smith did Clerks. And that's an epic film. So oh, doing yeah. Jane Silent Bob reboot, highly recommend it. It's hilarious. I've been cool. wanting to watch right. it. I'm glad it's free now to watch. Cool. So, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do the anti recommendation to that movie because I uh -oh. watched that and I thought it was absolutely awful. But oh, I loved it. Man. Do you I like Kevin Smith it. movies? I do. I mean, I love Clerks, Clerks too, the first Jay and Silent Bob. The the new one was uh, oh, that's, that's disappointing. Though. That's my opinion, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, which means it's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, uh, you know, kind of piggybacking on Mandy. Um, Spectrovision is Elijah Wood's company, and he, they made Mandy. Um, Nicolas Cage's latest was Color Out of Space, uh, yeah. kind of an HP Lovecraft from the same company. Um, Lovecraftian movie, and it's awesome. Uh, I also always want to recommend Dark on Netflix for those of you yes. who ever watched that yeah. series. That's the best show that's running right now far and away. Ozark's great. And then uh, The Platform. I'll just throw The Platform out there again. Cool. Sounds good. And uh, I'm going to go off the beaten path. I'm not going to recommend something to watch or anything like that, but I, I did finish reading this. Uh, it's called Pestilence, uh, Volume 1. Yeah, it's Frank Thierry. Yeah. Aftershock Comics. It's essentially zombies uh, during the Middle Ages. And uh, there's a uh, kind of like, um, so there's, you guys know who the Knights Templar are. I guess there's a, uh, um, let's see, what's the name of these guys? Uh, there, anyway, there's like a, a, a group, a subgroup of the Knights Templar that are essentially like they're kind of like SWAT team, I guess you want to, if you want to put it like that. Um, 
and zombies essentially uh, uh, invade invade uh, Europe, and they got to figure out find a cure. Um, it is uh, it, it's a ton of fun. I really enjoy I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, zombies are are one of my favorite uh, genres, and uh, the time time period is one of my favorite time periods. Oh my so gosh, I Michael! I that sounds will, great. Yeah, I will. Uh, I want to that. I got to ask you, since you're reading that book, do you read a lot of aftershock comics? Because there's a, a comic do. called Dark I, Arc. Do you read yes. Dark Arc? I, I yes. haven't read it, but I do. I have heard of it. Yes. So for you guys, I, it's a, I actually exclusively good. pretty much read in, uh, indie comics right now. Yeah, so. good, good, good. Uh, hey, Dark uh, Arc is great. Well, is speaking good, of dude. speaking of recommendations, we're about to hop over to Comic Man Andy's channel, uh, where we are reading Gideon Falls. Um, and yeah, that would be on there as well. Yes, so. that, that, that's going to start in about 15 minutes. Uh, we're going to review volume one of Gideon Falls, and then I will pick uh, the next uh, comic book to read after that. So Excellent, um, excellent book, you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dan Piercy says, Mike, you got to check out Paper Girls. I have Paper Girls. I just have not read it yet. So, uh, Dan, book. I will absolutely do that. So thank you very much for the recommendation. Same writer uh, of Saga. Yep. Yep. And also speaking of, okay, speaking of saga. So I also have this, why the last man, Brian K. Vaughn, uh, another, another good one. I've only read about half of this, so please no spoilers for anybody. Look out for the TV show coming probably maybe this year. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see. <laughs> Said I'll dig I, it. Uh, I still have PTSD from saga, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Did it hurt you? Did it hurt you too good? I was really, really upset. Spoil it. I still haven't read it. So oh, I God. can't even God. watch God. your guys' stuff yet, man. <laughs> Cookie, you All gotta right, get on it, man. I, I know, think that's I know. It. Um, let's go around the horn one last time. Tell everybody where they could find you. Oh, me first. Oh. See, I was so I was so used to Paul going first. In this <laughs> um, yeah, you can find me at boardinanoid.com. Um, we are doing our show live, much like Fake Nerd is, uh, every week right now through quarantine. Um, so I believe next week we're going to talk about, uh, uh, which, which is funny cause we've been doing a wheel on topics and a couple of them have been horror movie related, but, uh, a YouTube cooking show starring your favorite slasher villain, you know, pitch that. So oh. that'll be, that'll be the discussion this week. Um, and then, yeah, again, there's a Friday the 13th, uh, deal with Paul, uh, every Friday at, you know, one o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock central, um comic man andy's channel go check that out subscribe to everyone on here we're all awesome and uh don't listen to me go watch jay and silent bob reboot and decide for yourself <laughs> decide for yourself but it's really bad uh, yeah, that's, that's it snoogans yeah right <laughs> All right, for your next topic, Jackson, for your next week's show, I say you uh, do a cooking show with Carol fucking Baskin. <laughs> that bitch! <laughs> she, serves, she serves her food raw, Michael. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> don't forget salmon oil. There you go. All right, uh, Paul. Hey, I'm Paul from the podcast Tales from the Flip Side. We go live Monday nights around 9.30. And I uh, just kind of show what we've picked up, uh, if we have any pickups with everything going on. And um uh, if that doesn't sound like your thing, kind of be a fly in the wall with some guys just kind of shooting the breeze. Uh, check out the YouTube channel where we have a bunch of other shows, um, Golden Age comic reviews and um, uh, Global Comic Safari and all sorts of stuff to keep you entertained. So check it out. Awesome. Cool. Cookie. Hey, guys. I'm Cookie from Just Little Podcast. You can find me on social media at Just Little Podcast. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have an episode hopefully coming up next week. I actually have everything written down, so I'm going to start recording that either today or later today or tomorrow. Um, you can find me also on Conquistador Kavi's uh, channel, which is actually happening tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern. We just shoot crap, talk about whatever's going on in our lives, talk about comics, the whole deep pop culture scene. So check us out. Awesome. Cool. Ryan. Hey guys, it's again Ryan from the Fake Nerd Podcast. Uh, we have new episodes every Sunday. Now we're doing it live because we're quarantined and we're doing the stream yard thing like uh, like this thing is. Uh, so check us out like around five or six o'clock on Sundays uh, whenever we are all ready to do it, which is never at the same time. Um, I am personally a DJ Tony Snark. Uh, I have been streaming a lot on Twitch and YouTube because I lost my job because of the quarantine. It's not, it sucks, but whatever. Um, I'm playing right now X-Men Legends 2 because as you guys know, I'm a big X-Men fanatic and I haven't played that game in 15 years. So so I'm going through that. So check it out. DJ Tony Snark. Oh, I didn't even shoot a gun this time. 
<laughs> All right, cool. And I'm Michael, one of the hosts of the Downright Nerdy Podcast. Uh, what we got going on is tomorrow at Sunday uh, at noon Pacific time, we are going to be uh, premiering our latest episode, episode 57, where we're going to be talking all about mainframe Comic-Con. I, I interview Chuck from Chuck Load of Comics, and uh, we're going to talk all about the virtual Comic-Con that will be starting on April 25th and 26th. Uh, it's 100% free. All the proceeds and all any donations will be going straight to the Hero Initiative and um, uh, I think American Red Cross as well. A couple other uh, great uh, um, charities. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, it, it's going to be absolutely incredible. It's 100% free. Uh, make sure you guys check it out. MainframeComicCon.com and all on across all uh, social media platforms. And uh, yeah, like I said, thank you guys. Uh, thank you to all of my guests and hosts today. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to them. Uh, click the notification bells. Add them on Instagram. Add them on the Twitters. It's all fun and games. And stay tuned for next week over on Jackson's channel, Bored and Annoyed, because we're going to be talking all about Mac and me. Of all course, right. that goes on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I had that one with Daniel Craig, so it's... Hey. Uh, <laughs> that's that's it's such a better movie. I cannot wait for you to watch this. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, guys. Have a good night. Happy Easter, everybody.